Hello. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? Great to meet you. How's things? Yeah, good to meet you too. I'm all right, thanks. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, all good. Weather is nice, so I can't complain. I know, right. I was going to say, thank you so much for joining us on literally the hottest day of the year. No, not at all. <laughs> have you been um, Have you been out and about? Are you in London at the moment? Yeah, I'm actually back with my family, which is lovely. So I'm really, really happy to be home. Oh, very nice. Um, mm. It is, I'm in Wales at the moment and it is absolutely boiling. So anybody who's watching, hopefully you're outside, hopefully you're hydrated and mm -hmm. uh, you've got some cream on. Um, so... <laughs> I actually <laughs> scalded so myself. I am like got totally oh, burnt. No. Not, not good. Not a good look. Uh, that's quite good that you tan from Ireland though, because Welsh, I, well, me anyway, I'm pale as anything and yeah. I do not tan. So um, pasty Irish man. So where, so where in Ireland are you from? Uh, outside Dublin. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, but you're living in London now, or are you still in? Yeah, no, that's like my, like that's uh, where I base myself. Oh, great, cool. And that's out of obviously necessity with work and everything. Yeah, and... yeah. 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 Did you always plan to move to London when you started working in acting? It was probably somewhere, something that was always kind of on, on the cards, but it took a little bit of time just because work, I was, I was working in Dublin and then I always said when I'd have a bit of free time or kind of staring into the abyss of unemployment, I would uh, give London a crack. And I probably gave it a crack at the total wrong time considering lockdown and everything. Yeah. But um, look, yeah. nothing, nothing can be done about that at this point. Right, exactly. There's so much to do and you obviously can't go out and do it at the moment. I was mm. going to ask you as well, because obviously at the moment with everything that's going on with normal people and how fast, everything is propelled for you with the show. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're not able to like go and do all the press things in person at the moment. So it's a lot of staring at the screen and how have you found all of that experience? Yeah, it's, I, I suppose I have nothing else to kind of measure off a kind of typical press campaign. This is my version of uh, normal, I think. Um, but it's been vast. It's been a lot of sitting in front of screens, but ultimately it, we have got like Ali, my publicist and everyone around have, have, have really been able to organize a huge amount of meetings, a huge amount of kind of work on behalf of the show. And I don't think we've missed anything bar the kind of crack of getting to like go to different places in the world. But uh, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's the thing, right, is that we're able now, I think a lot of things are going to change after this because we're so able to not have people flying all around the world to do all of these junkets and things. And it's probably a lot better for people's mental health to be able to have their own life and do that as a side as well so yeah um yeah it's probably going to continue in some sort of capacity after this so there yeah. we go so um i wanted to go a little bit chronologically with your career um mm -hmm. and um backstage a lot of our um well most of our um audience are actors mm -hmm. um from varying levels in their career, but I think it's really nice to talk about uh, your experiences with how you got into the industry and if you've got any tips around that and everything. So yeah, how did you, when did you decide that you wanted to be an actor? Was it something that was always on the cards for you? No, um, I, <laughs> no, I did a school musical when I was 16 and it was very much something that I enjoyed doing, but I, it was only kind of when I got to applying for colleges, I was like, okay, what do I actually want to do with my life? And um, acting or the idea or the concept of being on stage was the thing that was most attractive to me at the time. And um, But I didn't have a huge, I didn't have experience other than doing um, musicals before I applied for drama school. Yeah. And where do you think that that came from? Was that something that you were into when you were younger perform performing? Um, I saw my, my dad act, w w acted when I was growing up and I saw him do things and I very much enjoyed watching him, but it was never something that I was like, oh, that's the thing. I'm yeah. going to go do that. Um, but I, I think he'd shout at me if I didn't say that I got the acting bone from him. <laughs> cool. So then when, uh, when you did your musical in school, which was, uh, was it Phantom of the Opera? It was indeed. It was, it was a biggie to start off with. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So when you did that for the first time, was that when you were like, okay, this is this is definitely for me? 
it, it was very like uh, I played a lot of sport growing up, but that was a like I I got a similar kind of rush from playing sport as I did from being on stage. But the, I remember the first night being on stage, I like got I like an immense like adrenaline rush, and I I I feel like I've been chasing that feeling kind of since. But it, it's it still wasn't. It wasn't like I did the Phantom and I was like, oh, I'm going to go be an actor. It wasn't until kind of very late in um, in terms of applying for colleges that I was like, okay, I'm going to pursue this as a viable career slash lifelong option. Yeah. And then when you made that decision, you went to um, Leo, didn't you? Yeah. 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 And how what, what was the process for you for making that decision to actually really go for it? The pro in terms of choosing the Lear? Yeah. Yeah, I I had see what happened was is that I was incredibly late in terms of in the, in the academic year in my final year to kind of apply to a lot of colleges and I at that point I wasn't even still dead set on being an actor and I remember a couple of my friends or people that I knew were actors who were had applied to the Lear I reached out to them and I was like talk to me about um the Lear and they were incredibly effusive about it and I emailed the um, head of administration there because I was late in my application so I was like could you please try and slot me in and thankfully they did and I had had like in, t in terms of the, the training there not, not that I, I haven't trained anywhere else so I, 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 I can I only have good things to say about that course and and Lachlan Deegan, who's the who's the head of the Lear, is like an amazing, amazing man. And and we were worked really hard in in a really because you hear the horror stories in drama in drama school where you're like forced to do crazy shit that I don't think is particularly useful. But they were really um, re like it was a really hard, rewarding three years where we kind of in interrogated loads of different kind of parts of the craft, and I found it. Like I, I, I know for a fact because I had no experience going into it. That's kind of where I learned the stuff that I, I try and I try to use today. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's such a drama school is it can be the most explorative, like explorative. Is that what it is? Uh, it, it is now. It is now. It is now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's so intense, and mm -hmm. the amount of pressure that you're under, and the days are really long, and the shows, especially in third year, you're churning out the shows and, and the yeah. showcase. And um, yeah, it, a lot of people get a lot out of it, but that's not to say that it, is, it suits everybody, right? Mm -hmm. it can no, be. totally. And like, it, I just I just know it suited me because I didn't really have a clue what I was doing before it, <laughs> you know? It gave me three yeah. years to kind of figure out, A, if I could do it, B, really enjoy acting in a kind of safe environment without the eyes of like the public, dictating your kind of taste in yourself as an actor and then kind of just kind of quietly acknowledging the fact that it's something that you feel like you have some degree of control over b that you feel like you've learned something c that you feel like you're kind of getting good at or you feel that there's a progress in those three years and then you're, you feel just ready to give it a whack now i totally understand that some people who who training would be detrimental for and i i think there's a total argument for that, but I, I can only speak from uh, my perspective on that. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. definitely something I would, I definitely need it. Yeah, and it definitely worked for you because you came out of Leah and did you get an agent straight away or did you get booked on the Great Gatsby job straight no, away from what I... Yeah, I signed with Lara, um, Lara and Curtis Brown for... I think we kind of did a, a we we did a sneaky kind of like deal because you're not typically allowed to sign till the end and we didn't officially sign till the end but I kind of had made the decision in my head that that Lara was the person that I wanted to work with and I, like I've been so lucky that the people that I'm working with are utterly amazing and we all have similar tastes but like ultimately I think an actor agent relationship personally I believe is something to to be protected at all costs and something that I feel is most productive when it's a lifelong relationship yeah totally and Laura Curtis Brown that is I mean such a great partnership she's, I'm sure yeah she's amazing so, so if she so if she um nabbed you up before you did your showcase where did yeah she... I was signed 
between me and Lara, and I hope nobody from here is. <laughs> but we, uh, no, it, it, it just felt like the right fit. So we were kind of, we had signed with each other before Showcase, which takes that kind of horrendous pressure of that event off and just kind of allowed us to get to know each other before the chaos of going out into the big bad world started to happen. Yeah. Well, it was good for both of you. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that point, how quickly after you finished uh, your course and did your showcase and everything, were you working straight away? Because I, I gather it was quite quickly, wasn't it? Yeah, so the way it worked out, I, got, I was incredibly lucky. We, um, the Great Gatsby was casting and it, it coincided with what would have been the start of our final year production, like the very final, final show. So I I I I was lucky that I was I got cast and Lachlan very generously let me out to play Gatsby and essentially I was graded on Gatsby rather than having to do the final play in college if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from that point, I mean, you went straight into that. How long was that run with Great Gatsby? Gatsby. That was. Um, that was about, I think it was a 12 week run with a four week rehearsal. So it was about four months. Great. Uh, was, yeah, a, a little a baptism of fire very much in at the deep end. In that yeah, oh my gosh. And from that point, I mean, it looks like you worked really consistently on consecutive projects in theatre in Dublin and then in London as well. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you've been working for, for quite a while and obviously now is, you know, you're on our screens and people know you a lot more. So how, how is that? I mean, when did normal people actually get released onto iPlayer? Oh, was it about two months ago? <laughs> two months I'm pretending ago. I don't know. I'm pretending that I don't know the date, but it was the you 24th know. of April. It was the 24th of April. So it, yeah, it was, it was two months ago. <laughs> what am I doing? Um, yeah. 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 So, three months I ago. Mean, That's three months, isn't it? Should I? I, I honestly have no yeah. concept of space or time at the moment. So yeah. it could be, yeah. I mean, it feels like another a lifetime ago because obviously all of this has been spread out for us. But it was just the perfect timing for something like that to come out for a lot of people because, well, the episode anyway, this is 12 half hours, isn't it? So yeah. It's so easy to just run all the way through those, especially right now. So, yeah, how has that been for you going from, you know, stage where, you know, you were doing amazing things, but now your face seems to be absolutely everywhere? Yeah, uh, no, the, the honest answer is that, that that is something that's just, it takes um, adapting to. It's something that yeah. you can't, it's not something you learn in drama school. Um, I have amazing friends both in the acting community and outside of it and a family that keeps me I think grounded and I, I, I don't know and then professionally I think I've always kind of felt or it's my opinion that um acting on stage and screen the principles are still the same it's about yeah it's about understanding the character you're playing doing your homework and trying trying to use the tools that you've learned or or that you naturally have to try and convey that character with as much honesty as you can. And yes, there is like modulations for acting on screen versus acting on stage, but I think the fundamental prin principles are the same. Um, yeah. So I, I, I tried to hold on to that because I, I, I felt like if I had gone into normal people feeling like I had to totally change the way I acted on stage, I would have blown up, like I would have just, capitulated do you know because yeah. I because I had no experience and I think working in front of the camera so yeah I, I kind of try to hold on to that as a mantra yeah exactly and the thing is as well obviously when you're going through the audition process you were brought on because of the way because of your talent so if you were trying to second guess and try and do something a bit different you know then that might not be what they were after anyway so mm -hmm. that leads me really nicely on to the audition process um I actually spoke to um Louise Kylie, um, I Louise. love Louise. She's so great. She was so amazing, and I had just finished watching it, um, mm -hmm. the whole thing, and I was like fangirling everywhere. She's um, she's really amazing anyway, and everything else. She oh, does, did you but... did you do that podcast with her? Did you do a podcast with her? No, I did a, no. a Q and A on Zoom. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I yeah. listened to a podcast today. Um, but she, um, she's she's amazing, and uh, she was talking to me about the the process overall, and um, and how you guys came to be on it. But um, I was wondering, from your from your side, um, what was that audition process like for you? Because you read for Connell quite early on, didn't you? Yeah, I I read for Connell. I was doing a play at the time with actually with Frank and Aina, uh, uh, Frank and Sean, and um, and they. Sean played um, Eric and Frank played Alan in the series. So we were all up for Connell at the time. And that was during the play that we were doing. So that was like in October, November of 2018. And then it, there was a quick kind of turnaround between the call back when I first met Lenny, which was amazing. And the, the process of walking to that audition was far more nerve-wracking than the actual audition itself, which I think is a testament to Lenny's capacity to just make you feel totally comfortable and kind of feel like you're your best self in an audition setting. And then there was a horrendous Christmas break where you feel like the momentum is starting to gather behind you. And then everybody, quite rightly, goes and sees their family and enjoys Christmas. Uh, <laughs> and then there was... Um, chemistry reads after Christmas I did two sets of chemistry reads and I was um the, on the only boy called back for the first one but they had not for me the part and that was obviously an amazing phone call to get but also a really odd position to be in because you feel like it's so close but it's totally not yours do you know uh, yeah, it's like you've been given like a really nice coat by a friend and told that like you can only wear it you might have it for the rest of your life or we could just take it back straight away right. <laughs> Ter terrible <laughs> terrible analogy but uh, <laughs> awful analogy and um then then they offered me the part between the first and second chemistry read wow oh my god that's amazing yeah you your um what i really love about the show is how individual your performances individually are so layered and they seem to change like one thing that i couldn't get over which i was speaking to louise about was I've not seen anything, number one, that's like shows me a more the most relatable like love story, especially for um first love. Mm -hmm. But also watching you guys from when you're meant to be, you know, in high school through to when you're in university and just finishing university, you look so different to me. But I think it's it's your mannerisms and obviously the way that you're it's just incredible the way that you evolve throughout the show so individually you're so strong but together there's it's electric and it's so beautiful so um i wanted to just ask you if you did much with daisy in the way of um obviously you have chemistry reads be before and and that's where that decision was made but did you do anything in rehearsal with daisy where you were able to like create the bond that we see on screen did you spend a lot of time together rehearsing is what I'm trying to ask? Yeah, um, we, 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 we spent, we didn't spend a huge amount of time together. We spent the guts of two weeks, but it was like, it wasn't actually really discussed in terms of like the production weren't like, now you guys go off and spend time together and get to know each other. I think, I think there was an understanding and I don't know where it came from that me and Daisy just would fundamentally get on. And I think sometimes it can be detrimental, I imagine, to kind of force chemistry onto two people when 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 sometimes if you let things breathe and sit and just trust that these two people understand the characters from uh, in a in a team perspective in in the sense that like my version of Connell totally slots into Mar to Daisy's and vice versa, yeah. and then ultimately just kind of trusting that we are good people who respect each other and who ultimately when given the right o over time we will like be friends and pals and all, all of those things and I think um, it, it, to answer your question properly we didn't do kind of like exercises we spent time with Lenny rehearsing the scenes and kind of reading the scenes and yeah it was a really nice gentle time of just kind of talking and kind of creating playlists for the characters and yeah, it just felt like, pardon the pun, it just felt like a really normal two weeks prior to filming. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really magic, the, the whole mm. thing. And from the beginning, it's 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 crazy. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. So, um, 
yeah, it's amazing. I was listening to Daisy the other day on a podcast with Elizabeth Day. I don't know if you hear Day. Oh, uh, yes. And she was saying, um, she was telling her about her ritual for watching the show. So I wanted to ask you, because she said that she shut herself away and, you know, watched it all back to back. What mm -hmm. was that like for you? Did you did you have to shut yourself away or did you watch it yeah. like in trips? We, I, we got the kind of, picture locks as they were um coming through because we had to sign off on like nudity and things like that and, and, and make sure we were comfortable with it but then when it kind of came out I I totally just locked myself into a room and kind of watched it in my own company which was really um not weirdly I, I was okay I was okay with it in the context given the fact that I'd seen it all before in like but it was nice to kind of sit sit and watch it like fully graded and just by myself and I was able to um process it amazing I saw something earlier which I I didn't like fully look into that there's a two-parter coming out for something comic relief comic or something. Relief. yeah what is that that's not you you is it no it's no me and Daisy are doing a sketch um in support of um Comic Relief Ireland. Um, it's on RT. What a great plug, Paul! It's on RT tomorrow. At, I think it starts at nine o'clock. Um, but I don't know. We we only did one. I think there's other. I, I look. I I actually don't know the the ins and outs of. I know we film. I, I I'm afraid to get in trouble. I don't know what to say. I know <laughs> me and Daisy are doing a sketch. Okay, great. Um, and and Lenny Lenny directed it, and Susie, who shot the first six episodes, shot it as well. Cool. I've got I've got an idea. If I actually find out what it is, I'll put it in there. <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So people can have a look. Cool. Um. So, with with everything that is um happening, and and obviously we need to be looking after ourselves in other ways at the moment because the world mm -hmm. has gone. Um. Well, the world is crazy. Yes. Um. I was wondering how you have been looking after yourself with everything that's going on, but also with the added pressure of, um, you know, having to represent, represent yourself in a different way when a lot of people are looking to you. And yeah, if you've got any tips around how you look after yourself when your career is really propelling very fast. Yeah, I, I, um, I, the honest answer is I don't really have a clue yet how to do it efficiently. I think it's kind of day by day. I think also, when you throw lockdown into the mix and you look at the kind of the the global respo response to like the racism that's apparent in the world today you're kind of throwing all these things into the mix and, and you're having to and, and suddenly you've this um platform thrust upon you and it's just about trying to use that as effectively as possible and i think that's and use it responsibly and hold on to your kind of own personal politics within that and kind of yeah. not become this vehicle for the public if that makes sense because like it's it's about like if you're going to post something where you are aware that you have a big platform you've got to be able to stand behind it in in, in this day and age and i'm totally yeah. happy to say like that i'm in total support of, of, of the movements that i've shared on social media and but it, it is a tricky thing to adapt to because like nobody really uh i just didn't have access to that amount of people ever before and and, and with that kind of volume of people there's there's a responsibility that is just inherent yeah definitely and you're do i mean you're definitely doing everything in that sense in the right way and it's totally uh, everyone can see that that's authentic and it's great that you are although it's only just been thrust upon you in this massive way that mm -hmm. um, it's being used in that way. And, and you know, there's something at a backstage that we're making sure that we're doing as well, that we're using, um, yeah, using this for what it should totally. be used for, for good. Totally. Um, so we're going to be wrapping up in a second. Um, I just wanted to ask you if you had any tips. As I say, a lot of our audience are actors, filmmakers, creatives. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you wish you knew when you first, maybe when you left Leah, that you know now that you could give some tips on? Um, I have a kind of complicated response to this because I think I entered the Lear without having a huge amount of advice from lots of people. And I think that helped me in the sense that like, I didn't enter the training or enter the 
industry with any kind of preconceived ideas about what good acting was, what bad acting was. I kind of figured it out in that three years about what I believed was good and what was bad. And I know that's kind of not the most useful answer, but again, to go back to what Lachlan said, at the end of third year, um, he, he pulls all the actors together and he said, what we've taught you over the three years is to, like, is what are the sets of skills that you're probably going to refer back to as you move forward in your careers. But the important thing to remember um, is that, <laughs> is that, he said, don't be a dick don't because it doesn't matter there's like you like you know as, as well as anybody there's tons of talented people in the industry that's just that's just um part part of the gig but it's about i think people will only work with somebody who's a dick once they won't go back and work. and it's about ultimately it's a very collaborative industry and it requires a lot of kind of give and take and ultimately it's just a way more pleasant experience working with somebody who's not that yeah. word um, I think yeah. that, that's my advice because I think and obviously work work as hard as you possibly can uh, in, in in like totally commit don't I, I think that if you feel like you're working harder than everybody else and you are disciplined and you you are totally committed I think it, it'll it'll break but I also know that it's it, it's not an easy industry yeah definitely not easy but i think i i had a um discussion on tuesday with um somebody who uh, was the founder of open door which gives access to people to drama Absolutely. school yeah and that was his number one tip was um yeah like everyone it's a it is a small industry i mean it feels really big but people know of people and um i think back in the day actors could get away with being no you can't and and i'm so delighted that that trend feels like it's leaving because Ultimately, it's not nice to be around and be, I don't think it's conducive to good work. Yeah, right, exactly. It's already high pressure enough, like, yeah, on totally. set for so long. Like, how long was normal people? How, what was the... Uh, it was four and a half months plus two weeks of pickup, so it was about five months all in. Right, and long days. So you want to be around people that are, you know, creating because they want to create and they don't yeah. diva around the place. So, absolutely. So just to wrap up, um, what have you got coming up? So we, were you on anything when everything got locked down or are you? No, I, 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 hopefully all going well. Um, I'll be going on to something in the relatively near future, but like it's a, I can't actually talk about it because of coronavirus and those, those things can um, slip. But I'm, if it does go ahead, I'm so excited and I'm going to be working with people that I really, really, really admire. So um, fingers crossed say a little prayer for me and hopefully it will come true. <laughs> I think we're all going to be saying a pray, prayer for you. And also I'm sure Lara at Curtis Brown is busy with offers for you right now <laughs> anyway. So we'll be seeing you on something very soon, I know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much for spending time. I really appreciate it. And no. I'm sure a lot of people got a lot of stuff out. I, I don't know if you've like kept an eye on the um, comment sections, but... I, I actually didn't. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, no, but to be honest, I have felt, I think, and I can speak on Daisy's behalf, and we have felt an, like a crazy, crazy amount of support. And it, and it has been, it, it's massively important to us because it has been like a weirdly stressful three months trying to promote a show uh, from your front room. And uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it, we're totally grateful for the support that it's it's garnered. And people are have yeah, just been so lovely so deserved so deserved um yeah definitely thank Great. you so much thank you thank you so much for your time Cheers. see you later bye bye, -bye.